Hello guys, welcome back to another video. With the release of Unreal Engine 5.5, Epic Games introduced a huge brand new feature, which is Nanite support on skeletal meshes. Basically what this means is you can now enable Nanite support on any character model that you'd like in your game, and you'll be able to utilize the full suite of benefits of using Nanite in your game, but now for your characters. So you can have insanely high detailed characters, and lots of them fully animated in your scene, and not only is this a huge deal for games, but just to explain to you guys how important this feature is, a lot of you guys might remember the game Cyberpunk. Uh, there were tons of bugs when this game was launched, but one of the obvious bugs was the LOD popping on character models. So for example, when you were walking around the game, you'll notice the characters would look super low poly and low resolution. Well, basically this happens because there's a lot of meshes in games where you have an LOD system. The game has to stream in a lower quality model and then swap it out for a high quality model when the player gets close. This is supposed to be a seamless transition where it's unnoticeable to the player but obviously as you can see this happens sometimes where it's very extremely noticeable and this is one of the issues that Nanite Skeletal Meshes aims to solve but in addition to that it aims to give us the ability to have highly complex detailed character models with millions of triangles all the same features that we are used to in the Nanite suite of tools. Now in this video we'll be taking a look at the Nanite Skeletal Meshes in Unreal Engine 5.5. Now if you guys are trying to learn game development in Unreal Engine 5.5 if you're trying to create your own game. I have a full multiplayer survival game course on my website smartpoly.teachable.com which will show you how to make a Steam multiplayer survival game from scratch from start to finish. So we'll create things like an inventory system, crafting system, harvesting and gathering system, a tribes or clan system, building system, and we'll even create this open world map that you see here with different AI that will spawn procedurally and much more more this course is packed with tons of content and if you purchase it right now you can get it actually bundled with my remastered course so basically I'm remastering the course and adding lots of new features like controller input support and much more so you can get both of those courses bundled for the price of one so you don't want to miss out on this limited time promotion check out the link in the description below or head over to my website smartpoly.teachable.com if you want to learn more about what it takes to create games inside of Unreal Engine 5 this course will get you started on your game development journey inside of Unreal Engine so make sure you check it out link in the description below and let's get right back to the video all right so here we are in Unreal Engine 5.5 so I have this demo project over here and we have have about 56 skeletal meshes in the scene so let's go ahead and simulate this so right now you can see all of the character meshes are fully animated as you can see every single character mesh has an animation and let's go ahead and show you guys the nanite view so we'll go from lit mode down to nanite visualization and we'll go ahead and do overview for now so as you can see all of the meshes in the scene have nanite enabled all the character meshes and if i go into the triangle mode you can see that we have now Nanite enabled on the character mesh, so there's no issues with the streaming in and out of the detail of your character mesh. So you can have really high detailed character models and it will stream in and out the data. And as you can see, there's no issues with the way that the character model is morphing its animations or playing the animations with Nanite. And let's go back into the overview. And these character models aren't the highest detailed quality. So as you can see, they're more towards game ready character models. So you can use a much higher quality a character model but right now i'm getting uh, roughly you know 40 to 100 fps i think when i actually click into the editor it gives me more frame rate and i actually play this in a new editor window so right now i'm getting about 80 frames a second in the game with the editor minimized so i did a performance comparison between nanite on skeletal meshes versus nanite without skeletal meshes and i wasn't able to see much of a difference at least with character models that aren't super high detailed like these ones so i think the performance gains will be much uh, more obvious if you have a high detailed or raw character model maybe something like a metahuman versus not having nanite enabled on that character model now just to show you one detailed character model over here i have the echo character this character you can actually download this on the fab marketplace but as you can see this character is very high detailed there's a lot of geometry on the mesh i can actually show you guys a wireframe of the character 
So it's fairly high detail. There's not something like raw nanite quality where you have maybe over a million triangles. Now I wasn't actually able to enable nanite on uh, this character model on the left because I believe the materials have some sort of issues. Even with nanite enabled on the materials, I still haven't figured out why I can enable it. So instead I have a copy of that model without any materials applied and this one actually has nanite enabled on it. So as you can see, this is basically what it looks like. And you can see the detail on the face is where you'll recognize you know, that detail quality the most. So I'll actually show you guys the difference. So this character on the right is using Nanite Skeletal Mesh. This character on the left is using LOD. So if I actually go into wireframe, you're not going to notice a huge difference. If I zoom out here very slowly, what you'll notice is the character on the left will swap out for a lower quality mesh. So you can see that it does it right there. So you can see the geometry is popping in and out. And you can see that it's swapping that mesh. You can really notice it with the cape there because in the next LOD or LOD1, it removes the cape. But you can see you have sort of this pop in where you know the transition is not as smooth as having a nanite mesh. So over here, again, you can really notice it with something like the cloth because you can see it popping in and out. But if you had more aggressive LOD system where, you know, maybe you have like a lower end computer or something like that, pop in and the streaming in and out of the LOD might be more obvious. You get like a low poly character or a character model that basically looks like this. You know, this will pop in and out from LOD 4 all the way down to, you know, LOD 0. So you get sort of like that pop in with the character, whereas if you use something like a nanite mesh, you're not supposed to have that sort of issue. Now there's a whole lot more other things that you can do with skeletal nanite meshes. Basically, you can also have, I believe, things like morph targets where the character could have, you know, a character customization system where you add, you know, more detail to the character model by using like a slider. I think in the trailer or the release of nanite skeletal meshes, Epic showed all these little bumps or details on like the mannequin to show how detailed you know you can get with your skeletal meshes now that we have nanite support for them anyways here's another level over here so you can see i have nanite enabled on all the character meshes in the scene we're getting about 70 fps so all the characters are animated and this is just the default ue5 mannequin character so let's go into the triangle overview so there is a total of let's see 108 of these characters in the scene. So quite impressive amount of characters. We're getting on average about you know 70 frames a second. Now it is important to note that obviously the UE5 mannequin character is not the most detailed character model that you can have. Uh, it's a very plain and basic character model, but nonetheless, we have over 100 of these walking, playing the walk animation in the scene all with Nanite enabled, and we're averaging about 70 frames a second. So pretty impressive what it can do. And again, this is just a taste of what it can do because obviously you could have even more detail on the character model. Like for the face example, you could have just some raw geometry. And one of the best examples or use case scenarios of this is in the Valley of the Ancient demo is when they released Unreal Engine 5.0, they released the Valley of the Ancient demo, which had this character or the boss character that had nanite on the skeletal mesh. It wasn't actually real nanite on the skeletal mesh. They used basically a parent skeletal mesh, which they had attached regular static meshes with nanite enabled onto them. So it was sort of like cheating in a sense that they were able to have these high detailed nanite meshes attached to the skeletal mesh to make it look like it was, you know, nanite on a skeletal mesh but in that case they had a very high detailed character model with nanite quality however back then they weren't able to get the same sort of animation deformation with things like bones where you know the character model is bending because static meshes can't really bend in the sense of a you know traditional character model that is rigged with bones and weights so yeah that is nanite on skeletal meshes it's actually very simple to enable you just right click any mesh or skeletal mesh in your game and just click the enable nanite for that again there's some issues with enabling nanite for certain meshes i couldn't get this to work on metahuman faces for some reason you can enable it on the body but not 
the face mesh. I think that might be an issue with the materials themselves. So maybe if someone figures that out, let me know down in the comments below if you figure that bug out. I'm still trying to figure out why it won't let me enable Nanite on a MetaHuman. But yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. So let me know what your guys' thoughts are on Nanite skeletal meshes down in the comments down below. And also, don't forget to subscribe for more future videos and Unreal Engine content. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one.